Mr. Chairman, Gurbajan Jagat, Mr. President, Mr. Ramachandran, and Dr. Ish Kumar, distinguished uh, members in the audience, my former colleagues, students from law college, ladies and gentlemen. It is already 7.30 and we have to conclude at 7.40, so I'll just be very brief. <coughs> uh, to start with, I would say that uh, when I talk to police officers around the country and I keep on interacting with them, I find them rather pessimistic. reform What have we achieved in, uh, after 16 years, this, that? But that doesn't uh, disappoint me because I have gone through a similar phase earlier also. Let me tell you, when I went to the Supreme Court with the petition, for the first two, three years, there was a lot of enthusiasm. Every time I would go for a social uh, event uh, uh, at any paramilitary organization or otherwise, everybody would ask me, sir, kya ho hai, sir, kya ho hai? After three, four years, that enthusiasm evaporated. They gave up. Sir, kuch nahi hona hai. Prakash Singh sahab apna sir patthar se nothing will move. And nobody, just people stopped asking. I mean, initially they would ask, sir, kuch kharcha ho raha hai, paise de de. Uske baad to kharcha ho hai, not that I, not that it bothered me, not that it deterred me, but that is how, I have gone through that phase earlier also, and I'm witnessing a repeat of that phase again. So I'm not disappointed, <coughs> because somehow I'm convinced about the destiny of India, and I'm convinced that because we have a great destiny, so, so we have to have a great police also. And that transformation will come about. <laughs> you see, the Prime Minister has already made two very significant statements. He has said a smart police, right? Of course, not much happened after that. But you, but you, can, you have also to take into consideration the fact that the work has to be done by the state governments. See, when I say that the police should be brought into concurrent list, there's a lot of controversy in any country. Why concurrent list that? People, uh, without going into the merits of the matter, I mean, two very distinguished persons, Madha Godbole, I think the one of the finest IS officers I have known, and uh, Pali Nariman, I think one of the greatest constitutional experts that we have. Both have unequivocally advocated for police going to concurrent list. And Mr. Pali Nariman was, he addressed, uh, he was the chief guest at one of our uh, Foundation Day meetings and he recounted the story. He said, look, forests were also in the state list. Then suddenly people realized that all the forests across the country are being cut. Then a delegation went to Indira Gandhi and said, Sir, uh, Madam, uh, uh, this country will become a desert. If we leave it to the state uh, chief ministers, this will become a desert. There is deforestation on a huge scale. You bring it to the concurrent list. She brought it in the concurrent list, and since then, we have been able to maintain the green cover at a reasonable level. So similarly, I mean, my contention is that the police is being devastated today by the state governments. I don't say that the central government is very great, I don't say that the central government doesn't make mistakes, but between the two, I will always prefer the central government. I mean, they have, they show some vision, the vision about which you talked. But if you go to the state government, some of the state governments are just feudal. They are not bothered. They look upon police as, a, as an instrument for their political agenda, to promote their political agenda. That's all. Zamindaron ke paas pahle jise lathayat hote the, politicians police opposition that is that's the only change so my point is that the states at the state level we are encountering a, a less progressive approach i'll put it that way than we what we find at the uh, government of India level. <coughs> anyway, uh, coming to, as I said, I'm not very, uh, I'm not pessimistic like others, and there are good signs. 
I mean, uh, I carried out an analysis of the compliance of Supreme Court's directions. And I found that in six states, I was quite surprised, the compliance has been reasonably good. And these six states are Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal, Goa, Karnataka, Manipur, and Mizoram. And in three states, satisfactory, Kerala, Nagaland, and Uttaranchal. Pathetic, or you can say poor in UP, Bihar, Himachal, Maharashtra, and Telangana. And rest of the states are just average. Rest of the states are average. But I must qualify my statement by saying that this assessment is based on the affidavits filed by the state governments. It may or may not reflect the ground situation. So uh, you may say that uh, the compliance is good on paper, but uh, when you go to the state, you maybe you, you don't find that reflected. But the fact is that on paper, they have moved forward. And from paper to action, I mean, it's a question of time. It's a question of time, assuming that a progressive government comes to power, there is greater pressure from uh, people, uh, that transformation would happen. And as was uh, mentioned by the panelists who participated in the uh, session on uh, vision, I mean, they said changes are happening, and they are happening. At a book discussion uh, of my book, uh, which have, took place in Chandigarh, there also one of the commissioner of police, he emphasized this point, that such changes are happening, and they need to be taken notice of. People would talk ill of the police, that this, that, but so much is happening. So much is happening, and uh, it's only a question of time that uh, the ripple effect would be seen across the country soon. So changes are happening. I will not go into the details of it. I mean, very briefly, I, I would say that uh, 112 was mentioned. The response time is much better. In Noida, they say within five minutes, they can reach a scene of crime. This is the boast of the commissioner of police. Hey, to, uh, uh, ka mukadma, phir dusre din bhi 24 baad police thi thi, ga, mein. Ab to, within five minutes, the police is there uh, if you get a call from 112. Then, I mean, women helplines in UP, I have seen, uh, and I'm sure in other states also, women helplines are very effective. I myself sat in the control room where women helpline was uh, uh, functioning, and I was really thrilled and uh, felt really impressed. Uh, Resources-wise, also, I mean, we are much better off today. But why are the changes not happening? I mean, this was being discussed here. I have my take on that. Not that everybody would like my conclusion. I find that the desire for change is maximum among the youth, among the probationers, among the young generation. They are really want, they want change because they have 25, 30 years ahead of them. And they don't want to serve under, under these uh, humiliating conditions. They want functional autonomy. As you climb up the ladder at the middle level, Yes, there is zest, but not to that extent. And once you reach the top bracket, it is, it is there. There are exceptionally good officers at the top level. Some of them are sitting here in this room. But generally, it, it starts evaporating. The higher you go, the lesser the enthusiasm. This is what I have seen. You see, during the last uh, 15, 16 years, uh, ever since the judgment came, let me tell you, at least eight to ten director generals would have approached me at different periods of time. And what did they approach me for? Sir, my year has been so long, you have an application so that I can become a commissioner of police, so that I can become a DGP. Nobody, no DGP or DGP rank officer ever came to me that, sir, we, I am for... Uh, police reforms and I want to do this, so please guide me on that. Nobody ever came. Everybody came for his elevation. And to everyone, my answer was the same. I have fought for principles. I don't fight for individuals. Sorry. This was my stock reply to everyone who came. Uh, about uh, how, how do we go? What is the way forward? I have to be brief, I'm sorry, it is already 7.40. What is the way forward? You see, I will give a three-stage. Uh, there are certain low-hanging fruits, and by low-hanging fruits I mean items of police reform which will not be opposed by any politician, 
which the state police can do with their own resources and which in most cases would not involve any financial outlay. What is the problem? I'll give one simple example. Why, why can't we change the ambience at the police station? And when I say change the ambience at the police station, what I mean to say is that when a complainant comes to the police station, he should go with a feeling of confidence. When a patient goes to a hospital, he goes with a feeling of confidence. He goes with expectation. He goes with hope. Even if it is a primary health center, he knows that he will get some help, he will get some help, he will get some help. He goes with hope, expectation. But when he goes to the police station, he has mental reservations. Report will be written or not written. We will not ask money. We will not have money. We will not give money. We will not give money. All kinds of thoughts come to, come to the mind. Uh, what, is the, what is the cost involved in removing this reservation in the mind? There is zero cost. It's just a question of attitude. Bring about that attitudinal change and it is for we senior police officers to do that. Let a complainant come to the police station with the same feeling as a patient goes to, as a patient has when he goes to a hospital. The day you bring about this transformation, let me tell you, 50% of the battle is won. 50% of the battle for police reforms is won the day you bring about this transformation. Isme koi ek paisa nahi kharch hona hai. I mean, there are so many other things. So start with the low-hanging fruits, which you can do on your own, which you do, for which you do not need to go to government. And in fact, uh, a few months, uh, about two months back, I circulated a letter to all the directors general of police and uh, with the request that copies of this letter may be passed on to all the senior officers of the department and right down up to, to the level of superintendent of police that these are, these are 10 points on which you can act at your own level where no political uh, support is required, where no legislative action is required, where no finances are required. This is within your competence. Start with these 10 points. Even taking up those 10 points will win the confidence of the people and we need to win the confidence of the people. The day you win the confidence of the people, let me tell you, there would be a clamor, there would be public agitation for police reforms. And when there is public agitation for police reforms, the, the people's representatives will have no option but to support your cause and talk about police reforms in the assemblies and the parliaments. We have to win the confidence of the people and that, that, is, that, that, will, be the, that will be the trigger for uh, police reforms. And as for uh, uh, Ramchandran wants a three-tier uh, progress, about um, up to 27 and then 37 and 47. I say up to 27 you concentrate on the low hanging fruits. The 10 points which I have sent in to all the directors general of police. In the next stage you take up less controversial issues. I mean issues uh, about which there is some resistance but where you think you can get over it. I have a list of all that but for want of time I'm not, I will not read the list. And in the third stage you take up issues which probably require where there would be really tussle, which may require some constitutional amendment, which may require some new laws, uh, which may require uh, I mean, changes of a far-reaching nature uh, to which there would be resistance. So that way, let us plan low-hanging fruits in the first phase, slightly ticklish questions in the middle phase, and then the real uh, tougher issues in the last phase. And that's how we should plan for the 2047. With these words, I thank you once again, and uh, my best wishes to the foundation. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to Ramachandran. Thank you to Mr. Gurbhajan Jagat. Thank you.